The functions we've used up to now are actually quite simple, but many of the functions that you want to work with are more complex and require more arguments. So in this clip, we will look at the basic principles of complex R functions. And once you understand the principle, you will have made considerable progress in understanding how R works in general. Suppose you plan to play the lottery on the weekend and you want to let R select the numbers for you. If you play in Germany, you need six numbers from a pool of 49. Then we can first create a vector balls containing the numbers 1 to 49, and then use the function sample, with which we can instruct R to draw a random sample of six numbers from our pool of 49 balls. In RStudio, if you type the name of a function followed by parentheses, a yellow tooltip pops up with some rather cryptic information. This is actually very useful information. A tooltip tells you which arguments the function expects. First here, by convention, x stands for the data structure that the function will be performed on. So in our example, this would be the vector with the pool of ball numbers. The next argument specifies the size of your requested sample, which is six numbers in our case. And the replace argument says whether you want to return a number to the pool after it is drawn. This argument has a default value indicated by false, which means that R will not return an element back to the pool if you leave this unspecified. And this is of course the behavior that we want in selecting lottery numbers, where balls are never returned to the urn after they're drawn. The probability argument has a default value of nil, which says that each element has an equal probability of being selected. And this is again what we want, assuming that the balls in the lottery are fair and have an equal chance of being drawn. Okay, so let's draw lottery numbers. We want to draw from the vector balls, which is the x argument, and we want a size equals 6. And we could enter replace equals false, but since this is the default, we can omit the argument. And the same goes with probability. Now when we hit enter we get six lottery numbers and by the nature of this being a random sample you will in all likelihood get a different set of lottery numbers. With R functions if you enter the arguments in the order in which R expects them you can leave out the name of the argument. So you can actually enter sample balls comma six comma false because as the first argument R expects the vector to be drawn from then the size and then the value for replace. Or even shorter, it would be sample balls 6 in our case, because false is the default and will be added by R automatically if you don't specify it. You wouldn't even have to create a vector balls in the first place, but could directly enter the range of numbers to draw from, say a sample 1 to 49 comma 6, which means draw 6 numbers from a sequence of numbers between 1 and 49. You can also enter the arguments to a function in any order you want, but if you do so, you have to specify the name of the argument, so R knows which is which. Sample replace equals false, comma x equals balls, comma size equals 6.